the Australian Terrier. The Bedlington Terrier. The Border Terrier. The Bull Terrier. The Miniature Bull Terrier. The Cairn Terrier. The Chesky Terrier. The Smooth Fox Terrier. The Wire Fox Terrier. The Glen of Imal Terrier. The Irish Terrier. The Kerry Blue Terrier. The Lakeland Terrier. The Manchester Terrier. The Norfolk Terrier. The Norwich Terrier. The Scottish Terrier, the Celium Terrier, the Sky Terrier, the Soft Coated Wheaton Terrier, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. The Welsh Terrier, and last but not least, the West Highland White Terrier. Thank you, David. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are back at the NEC for crafts. A little late this year, I'm afraid, but it's good to see you. We're a bit thin in numbers tonight, it looks, so I'm going to ask all of you to make that extra effort to clap and cheer so that uh, the dogs and the handlers think we've got a full house. How about it? That's absolutely marvellous. Absolutely marvellous. Right, first dog we have is the Airedale Terrier. Its number is 47 and it is a dog. There were 97 Airedales entered today for Mr. M. F. Harris who was the pre-judge. This is a breed which was formed in the second half of the 19th century by fanciers in the Air and Wharf Valleys. That's in Yorkshire. Exact origins are uncertain, but it's generally accepted that otter hand and rough coated working terriers were involved in the effort to produce a larger and gamer type of terrier. And since those early days, the breed has been much refined to produce the handsome terrier which we see in the show ring today. The Airedale Terrier, ladies and gentlemen. On the table we have the Australian Terrier. 
34 of them were exhibited and the one representing the breed in the group ring is the dog 125 and the judge for the breed was Mr. Frank Jones. It's a breed affectionately called the Aussie. Developed in Australia during the 19th century, it evolved from various crosses of small working terriers taken out to the antipodes by settlers. <laughs> Earliest record of the Australian Terrier is 1812. The Terrier, of course, came to this country. I won't say it's one of the biggest numerically breeds that we have, but it is quite popular, certainly among those who fancy it. It's the first Australian breed to be shown in Australia, and the first of the Australian breeds to be recognized outside of Australia. Now we come to the Bedlington. 75 entered in the breed classes. This one is number 180, and it is a dog. The Bedlingtons were judged by Mrs. Margaret Phillips. Origins of the Bedlington go back about 200 years. It comes from that northernmost part of England. Early names being accepted were the Northumberland Fox Terrier, the Rothbury Terrier, and then latterly the miner's dog. And then it became known as the Bedlington. Graceful moving dog. First of the breed to be officially recorded as a Bedlington was one called Young Piper. It was bred in 1825. In 1859, an earlier dog of the miner's dog was entered public dog show, one of the first shows to schedule a bedroom. The uh, next dog up is the Border Terrier judged in the breed classes today by Mr. T.A.G. Knight. And a very good entry of 229. And the best of breed was the Bitch 393. Until the middle of the 19th century, the History of the Border Terrier can't be <laughs> certain, but since then it has become an established breed. It comes from the border country between England and Scotland. The requirement of the breed is for legs long enough to be able to move swiftly across the countryside, to follow a horse if need be, and yet be small enough to go to ground once known as the Reed Water Terrier or the Cockatdale Terrier after the valleys and localities of its early existence. Here we have the Bull Terrier. 89 were entered in the breed classes for His Honor Judge David Merriam who comes to us from America. He chose 512 a dog as his best of breed. Briefly, the Bull Terrier was bred originally to fight. And until the practices of bull and bear baiting, cock fighting and dog fighting were outlawed by Parliament in 1835, these were all popular pastimes widely practiced all over England. <laughs> Breed was first standardized in the 1850s by a certain James Hinks. Today's Bull Terrier is a strong, agile, but peaceful and easily controlled animal. Bull Terrier Club was formed in 1887, and the club's code of conduct opens with the words, the welfare of Bull Terriers 
must be of first concern. The Bull Terrier. Now follows the Miniature Bull Terrier. The miniature Bull Terriers were bred primarily to help their larger namesake in rat killing duties. They were great favorites with those who fancied the breed as a house pet. And the miniatures, of which there were 38 entered, were also judged by David Merriam. And he chose 555, five, five, a bitch, as his best of breed. At one time, the uh, miniature bull terriers weighed from as little as three pounds to 30 pounds. But the variety of under 10 pounds, for which there were classes at the old Islington show of 1863, virtually disappeared because of problems connected with extreme miniaturization. Miniature Bull Terrier Club was founded in 1938. They became eligible for KC Challenge Certificates shortly afterwards. It's interesting that the miniatures and the Bull Terriers have an almost identical standard, the main difference being the size calls. Next we have the Cairn Terrier, 166 were entered in the breed classes and the best of breed 628 which is a bitch was chosen by the judge Mr. J, uh, Mr. Jim Wilson. Cairns are directly descended from the old style working terrier of the Highlands which was a rugged and workmanlike dog. Gradually up there, breeds known as the Sky Terrier, the Scottish Terrier, and the West Highland White evolved and were named, and the Cairn, the last to be formally named, remained the closest to the original small working terrier. He did the job he had been bred for. He worked underground in darkness. He alone had to decide how best to tackle and overcome his quarry, had to be resourceful, independent, and intelligent, and all these qualities were developed to a high degree and are still evident in most of the Cairns we have. This then, ladies and gentlemen, the Cairn Terrier. Now we come to the Sesky Terrier. 34 were entered. The number of this one is 739, and it is a bitch, judged by Mrs. A. Kennedy. Its number, no, sorry, there are 34 entered. That's right, the Sesky Terrier is a modern and manufactured breed, created from the judicious crossing of Scottish and Celian Terriers, and the story all began back in 1928. Yet it was many years before the theory which was being used to create this breed was able to be implemented. The man who created the breed, a man called Horak, died in 1996. And just before he died, he obtained a Celian bitch called Joyful Juta, which was soon joined by two other Celians. In this way I had the opportunity to get to know the Celian, he said. And he went on to create this breed, the Sesky Terrier. Miss Isabel Patterson judged the Dandy Dinmont Terriers. We had 92 entered, 
the best of breed is this dog, 834. Last year, the Dandy Dinmont Terrier Club celebrated its 125th anniversary. And many breeds can claim an interesting history, but the Dandy Dinmont is unique in the fact that it derived its name from a literary source, namely Sir Walter Scott, who named it thus the Dandy Dinmont in his story of Guy Mannering way back in 1874. <laughs> Dandies originated in the border country. They were bred as working dogs by the border gypsies, the traveling tinkers and itinerant musicians who used them for rough field work, used them for poaching, and also to help in the extermination of the otter and the badger. This then, the Dandy Dinmont. Mr. Jack Watson judged the Smooth Fox Terriers. 59 were entered under him and he chose this one, number 882, which is a dog. Fox terriers and fox hunting are linked by name and occupation, so their development from terrars, as they were once called, a term covering any dog who'd go to earth, was largely due to the sporting fraternity in the fox hunting shires of this country, especially in central England. The first dog show ever held was in Newcastle in 1859 but it was there that the breed was shown, but in the general terrier classes. Another show at 1862 at the Old Wharf, Broad Street, Birmingham. The quality of fox terriers was illustrated by the fact that in the general terrier class, they won all the major awards. And from that time on, the fox terrier has developed in two forms, of course, the smooth, which we're seeing now, and the wire-haired, which we shall see in a moment. The wire-haired. Breed judged by Mr. Peter Winfield. He had 47. His best of breed was this dog, 932. It's likely that the rough coat of the wire haired was developed before that of the smooth coat, but the wire made its um, show ring debut some 20 years after the smooth. The Reverend Jack Russell, who gave his name to another breed of terrier, kept a pure rough coat strain from 1815 to 1870. At the time of his death in 1883, he was considered to be the oldest fox terrier breeder in England. He started his own strain, the Jack Russell Terrier, and years later the breed has come to be another terrier in our show ring. But this is the wire-haired fox terrier. Thirty-two were entered in the Glen of Imel breed classes. A bitch, number 990, was chosen as best of breed by the judge, Mr. Harold Gay.
I suppose one can say that of all the terriers, the Glenavon Mal is probably the least known today, in spite of efforts of a small band of enthusiastic owners to extol the virtues of the breed at every opportunity they have. It was first mentioned in 1575 as a breed in George Turberville's The Noble Art of Venery and Hunting. It speaks of a dog taking its name from the Glen of Imal, a region southeast of a place in Ireland. Books of great antiquity are not usually available for general reading, and there is very little available for reading on this breed at the present time. Recognized as show dogs in 1933, first classes for the breed were at the St. Patrick's Day show of that year in Dublin, first shown here in 1982 at the National Terrier Show, incidentally. Thirty-seven entries in the Irish Terrier classes, and they produced this dog, 1012. The judge was Mr. Kevin Anderson. Irish Terrier has existed for many years in Ireland. A sporting terrier having been kept in the native land for many generations. Bred not so much for looks but for their working qualities and for their gameness. Irish Terriers were formerly of many types and colors. However, Wheaton and all shades and red predominated. We recognize the Irish these days in our show ring by that lovely red color. The Irish Terrier Club was formed in 1879. The Irish Terrier. Mrs. Ferrelith Summerfield judged the Kerry Blue Terriers. She attracted an entry of 52, and her best of breed was the dog 1068. Lots of stories about the origins of the Kerry Blue, but whatever they may have been, we do know that the Kerry Blue has been around in his native Ireland for some considerable time. Seems likely that uh, he shares his ancestry with the Irish Terrier and the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. And even today, Wheaton-colored puppies are occasionally born in Kerry Blue litters. At a show in Limerick in 1887, there was a class for what was called Silver-Haired Irish Terriers. And in Killarney in 1916, Mr. Frank Butler, a terrier expert, judged a class of blue terriers, brackets, working. The blue terrier became more and more popular, and the show career of Kerry's started in England in 1922. And of course, as we know, they have risen to the heights. It was one of this breed that went best of breed here last year. Best in show, I mean, last year. On the table we have the Lakeland Terrier. 30 were entered for the judge, Mrs. B. E. Greenway. She chose the dog 1088. Lakeland Terrier is a dog that appeals to both exhibitors and pet owners. Dog too, which needs regular grooming, a good brush and comb two or three times a week. One of the main charms of a Lakeland is its ability to adapt to the circumstances 
of the moment. In his native area, he, in his haunts, he leads a hard life, especially in the hunting season. He has to battle with biting winds, driving rain and snow. Lakeland's always been a good mixer with other breeds. Conversely, its years of domesticity do not seem to have impaired the Lakeland's estrus sport or his pluck or ability in the face of natural enemies. The word terrier comes from terra, the Latin word for earth, coupled with the word dog provides an instant description of the animal, an earth dog. Lakeland Terrier, ladies and gentlemen. Mrs. B. Beals judged the Manchester Terriers, their representative now standing on the table. There were 55 entries. And Mrs. Beals chose Treble 1 2, a dog, as her best of breed. Manchester owes its origins to the Black and Tan Terriers, which is believed to have been the original Ratting Terrier, highly skilled in its job. The sport of rat killing and rabbit coursing reached its peak in the mid-1800s when a certain John Hume determined to create a dog with grit for both purposes, crossed a Black and Tan with a coursing whippet. From this crossing, they developed the breed we now call the Manchester Terrier. Color given in the standard is jet black with rich mahogany tan, but the standard also takes 10 lines to, of type to detail the markings. Mrs. Anne Burden judged the Norfolk Terriers. She had 76 entered, chose the dog 1211. Present day Norfolk began life as a show dog in 1932 when it was known as the Drop Eared Norwich Terrier. It was accepted on the Kennel Club Breed Register at that time. During the 19th century, some of the undergraduates at Cambridge University bought small terrier dogs from a dealer named Charles Lawrence, known as Doggy Lawrence. These small terriers were often red or a black and tan color, used mainly for catching rats around the colleges, and they became known as the Trumpington Terriers, Trumpington as a district of Cambridge. Their origin is not really known, but there is a suggestion that a small Irish Terrier and a bigger type of Yorkshire Terrier had been used in their breeding. Actually, the history of these little dogs is quite fascinating, but it would take much too long to detail here. recognized by the Kennel Club in 1932. And here we have the uh, Norwich Terrier. 48 were entered under Miss Katrina Bentley. She chose this dog, 1280. As a breed, the Norwich evolved almost by accident, partly from litters bred internationally for sale and partly from litters bred for uh, family companionship. I've spoken about the Trumpington Terriers, and at this time too, there was a small dark brindle terrier bitch, rather like the breed then known as the Aberdeen Terrier. 
smooth coated. It was mated to a long coated Trumpington Terrier. The dog puppy from this mating was named Rags but went to the Norwich area. His red colour always came through his puppies. Smaller red terriers from these matings are often crossed with small red terriers indigenous to East Anglia. There were, of course, other crosses, but out of all this mix, the Norwich Terrier eventually began to evolve. Kennel Club recognised this as a breed also in 1932. You have the two types of ear carriage with the Norwich, it's up, with the Norfolk, it's down. Mrs. Peggy Grayson judged the next breed, the Parson Russell Terrier. 127 were entered and she chose 1395 a dog the fox terriers and the parson russell terriers of today are descended as i said earlier from the foxy terriers of the early part of the 19th century reverend jack russell was an inveterate terrier breeder and he produced many dogs which are in the history books. The Fox Terrier Club was formed in 1875 and the Reverend John Russell was one of its founder members. The original Parson Jack Russell Terrier Club was originated by the journalist and hunting man Arthur Heinemann in 1894. The name was later changed to the Parson Jack Russell Club and has been changed again. It's now known as the Parson Russell Club or Parson Russell Terrier. You can tell by the entry of this breed. 127 were entered today. It is a sturdy dog on short legs. It's even said that the Scotty is good with cats if mixed with them, raised with them. But other cats beware. Rough-haired short leg terriers are referred to as far back as 1436. And they were used for badgers, foxes, and so on, but in 1879, the first show dog appeared called Granite, and that dog was the forerunner of the modern Scottish Terrier. Granite, history tells us, was as long as a sky, which we shall probably see in a moment, but had very good legs and feet. Of course, they have changed very much in their appearance from then, And this is the Scottish Terrier which we see today. Celium. 36 entries. Mrs. Barbara Garvett was the judge chose the dog 1528 as her best of breed. Celium took its name from its place of origin in South Wales near Haverford West. From old records we learn that following breeds all went into the making of the Celium, the Welsh Corgi for size, length of back and lowest to ground, Cheshire Terrier, a now extinct breed, which was a kind of small white bull terrier for its colour, tenacity, 
purpose and gameness. The dandy Dinmont was used to introduce strength of jaw and lowness to ground, and the Fox Terrier gave the double weather resisting coat. And the West Highland White kept the size small and more firmly implanted the white colour. And it was a Captain Edwards, a keen sportsman, who lived on the estate of Celian, who bred to stabilise the type of terrier required for the sort of work he wanted. And his breeding is remembered in the Celians we see in our show ring today. Here is the Sky Terrier, which I mentioned briefly just now. The judge was Mr. Walter Goodman, who comes to us from America. He chose the bitch 1531. Sky is one of the oldest of all the terrier breeds. Came, as its name suggests, from the Isle of Skye. They're very much a working terrier. Being low to the ground enabled them to go to ground for fox and badger. Though you may describe the exterior of the sky as glamorous, it in no way lacks the true terrier character. Sky is a very courageous dog, has great stamina and agility. Generally, he's good-tempered, exceedingly loyal to those he knows. I've heard it said he can be a bit distrustful to strangers. And in spite of what looks to be an awful lot of coat, I am told a weekly grooming should be enough to keep a Sky's coat in good condition. body is long, it's 41 and a half inches from nose to tail tip, and they weigh, talking in old money, from about 25 pounds upwards. soft-coated Wheaton Terrier, originated as an Irish crofter's dog. And these were judged by Mrs. Pamela Cross Stern. Good entry here of 124, and she chose the dog 1638. Medium-sized dog, as you can see, and it was bred for sturdy health and sound temperament. It has the steadiness of a working farm dog and the intelligence and the in energy of a terrier. As a family dog, he usually attaches himself to the whole household. A Wheaton is said to be less scrappy than many other terriers. He's a gregarious dog, enthusiastically seeking to play with all the other dogs he meets. But we still don't see all that many of them around. But we do see them in our show ring on a very regular basis. So this then, ladies and gentlemen, the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier, which comes to us originally from Ireland. Staffordshire Bull Terriers had two judges today. Dogs were judged by Mrs. Dorothy Berry. And the bitches were judged by Mr. Gerald Holmes. There were 157 dogs entered and 163 bitches. And the best of breed 
which you see now was the dog 1897. Staffordshire first came into existence around the 17th century. And of course, it was a dog which came through from the fighting pits of its day. And when baiting sports and dog fighting became unlawful, a group of men in the Staffordshire area endeavored to preserve their breed by introducing them to the show world. After a lot of discussion, there was a standard written describing the dog's physical attributes. And this dog was then named the Staffordshire Bull Terrier to differentiate from the English Bull Terrier. Officially recognized by the Kennel Club in 1935. Welsh Terriers attracted an entry of 29 for Mrs. Judith Averis. She chose the dog 2054 as her best of breed. Sometimes called the Little Welsh Dragon. Can be boisterous, can be lively, can be curious, but they're always friendly. Function of the Welsh, common to all terriers, is that of an earth stopper or a dog that will go to ground into caves after cane. Terriers were used with packs of hounds which drove the quarry to a spot where the terrier could corner and seize it. First glance, the Welsh terrier might just be mistaken for a black and tan wire fox terrier or even a miniature Airedale. But he's neither of these. The head of a Welsh in proportion to his body is more powerfully made than either that of the Fox Terrier or the Airedale, being boxy rather than wedge-shaped. It is said that the breed standard for the Welsh Terrier is a word picture of the ideal Welshman which has been adopted by breeders and registry associations. Now we have the West Highland White Terrier. Very good entry here of 186. Best of breed was the bitch 2209. The judge was Mrs. Mary Greening. Game, tough little dog. Comes from rough-coated terrier stock of Scotland. It was used like other terriers for vermin control. And because white stood out against the natural background of the landscape where it worked, white terriers have been in use in Scotland for over 300 years. At the uh, first organized dog shows, this breed appeared as the White Scottish Terrier. But in 1904, they were first classed as West Highland Whites. Two years later, they appeared in America. A breed which loves its place with the family and especially in the warmest place in the house. The West Highland White. Breeds, ladies and gentlemen. And our judge now will look at them all again very quickly just to confirm in her mind what she has gone over. She's going to shortlist, of course, 
and I think you'll find you'll probably pick about eight. Now, which eight would you pick from this lovely bunch of terriers? Might be interesting to note while we are waiting that the Staffordshires had the highest entry Borders were second and the West Highlands were third Calling forward the Airedale. The Bedlington Terrier. The Sesky. The newcomer to our show rings. The Wire Fox. Kerry Blue. the Norfolk, they're both coming out. <laughs> Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And that is the eight, I think, yes. Well, thank you all very much. I think our judge has made her choice. She's going to shake hands with all the rest of you as you leave. Thank you very much indeed. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. You're not many, but make a big noise. parade of dogs and so our excuse me our eight chosen candidates for the four places in this group have now gone to the far side of the ring from the commentary box dr. Monica Bodger black will decide from these which one shall take the four top places I think you're doing very well for a fairly small audience, the noise you're making. Now's your chance again, because we're going to see them all move. And first goes the Airedale, number 47. The Bedlington. 180 The Sesky 739 Fox Terrier, 932. <laughs> the Kerry Blue, 1068.
the Norfolk 1 2 double 1. Norwich, one, two, eight, oh. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier one eight nine seven. Well, the boards are out. Eight lovely dogs. Four to be selected. It's the Kerry Blue, ladies and gentlemen. 1068. It's the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. 1897. The Wire Fox Terrier. Nine three two and the Norwich one two eight oh. My judge just shaking hands with the others who didn't make this final lineup. And to make the presentation to our Terrier winners. Will you please welcome Mr. Will Kohu, who writes for the Daily Telegraph, a column you may have seen about Parker the Scotty, and he is being escorted out by Miss Sybil Churchill, Chairman of the Crafts Committee and a member of our General Committee. Well done. Kerry taking the first place. While the presentations are being made, I know you will applaud each of the dogs, but we also say thank you very much to our judge, who's made an excellent job of judging these terriers for us. Thank you, Dr. Roger Black. Now the second prize goes to the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Now the Wire Fox Terrier. And finally to the game, little Norwich Terrier, who says, look at me, Dad, haven't I done well? Well, congratulations to all of you. Thanks again to our judge and the, uh, the dogs.